So it was just a few days ago where the Ravens had made a few different roster moves, uh, adding some guys to the practice squad. Uh, one of the most notable names on there was Kenji Bahar, who had been with the Ravens before, uh, and he was expected to come back once the Cardinals signed Trace McSorley off of Ravens practice squad. They also signed uh, tackle Jared Jones-Smith, um, but then there was a third name that was very intriguing because they brought in yet uh, another cornerback. Uh, and that was Kevin Tolliver. And I was unaware who Kevin Tolliver was. I was very naive uh, to his game and to his name. And then I saw some people in the comment section was like, hey, what's up with that cornerback? Uh, re received a few DMs on it too. Like, hey, any, anything about the cornerback? You know anything about him? And I didn't. I didn't. So I decided, you know what? Let me look up this cornerback. Uh, so he, I, I, the one thing I did notice, he went to high school in Florida. So... Them connections, they, they, they. So he's more than welcome to, to be a member of the Florida Ravens. So that's first and foremost. But now nah, he, um, so he's 6'2", went to LSU. Um, he, uh, got, was an undrafted rookie free agent, 2018. Um, spent some time with the Bears, played a little bit, didn't start too much. Um, and then he spent some time with the Broncos as well. So he hasn't been on the field too often. Um, but he's been in the league for a couple of years, so he's been able to get that NFL coaching. And I think that's one of the bigger parts about his game that I noticed from when I watched some film on him uh, at college. One of the things that I saw, one of, the first thing that I loved, that I absolutely loved, and this is something that I feel like, not that it can't be taught, but if you have it in college, oh, man, it makes your transition to the NFL that much easier, especially as a cornerback. He is not afraid to be physical. He's not afraid. He is not afraid, afraid to come up and hit somebody. He is not afraid to come up and tackle somebody. And I appreciated that about his game so much because when I watch and I didn't watch highlights, I, I don't like watching highlights because highlights only shows the good stuff. But when he's not afraid to come up and tackle a running back. He's not afraid to be physical with a, with a wide receiver. He's not afraid of that contact. And that's, that's half the battle right there if you're playing defense. That is half the battle. So shout out to him for that. I, I absolutely love that. His speed, his speed wasn't too bad either. Now, um, one of the things that I saw from him in college, it seemed as if he struggled a bit locating the deep ball. That's why I felt like well, it was a weakness of his uh, in college, just really tracking the ball. And hey, when, if you struggle with that uh, in college, and even if you struggle with it in the NFL, that does not mean that you're going to be a bad cornerback. Because I would liken it to somebody who a lot of fans feel like is the best cornerback on the Ravens team. Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey. That's something that Marlon Humphrey struggled with in college. Big time. I remember uh, the, the draft, the, the night we drafted Marlon Humphrey. One of my guys uh, who is a big, big, big Bama fan. I was like, oh, man, what, what's up with this guy? Who, who's Marlon Humphrey? What, what, what's he about? And he told me, hey, great cornerback, physical cornerback, loves to tackle, Great. Loves to press these wide receivers and all that. But he struggles with the deep ball. He struggles tracking the ball. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks for letting me know. So then what happened? Rookie year, Marlon Humphrey struggled with it. Sophomore year, Marlon Humphrey struggled with it. But even to this day, Marlon Humphrey still sometimes struggles with it. Does that make him a bad corner? No, because a lot of his other characteristics have made him such a good corner overall. Now, this year, we know this year, it's been a little down year for Marlon Humphrey, but still, Marlon Humphrey is still a really good cornerback. So with Kevin Tolliver, it just, it, it, it reminded me of that a lot. Now, that was in college, though. Now, and now, now for, for NFL, there wasn't really much film on him there. But from what I did see, it looked as if that had gotten better. He had gotten better at tracking the ball. He had gotten better at locating the ball because that's big. That, that, is, that is huge because you could be the best cornerback in the world. You could have a good stance. You could have good speed. You could have good size. You could have good physicality. 
And you could be draped all over the wide receiver. Like, uh-uh, you ain't about to burn me. Yeah, you ain't about to get no separation from me. I'm all over it. But if you can't track the ball, you could be right there with the receiver all day. But if you don't know where the ball is, that receiver is going to make plenty of catches, whether you're there or not. So the fact that his game has improved in that aspect, that's big. Now, something that we can look forward to as long as he is around on this Ravens team is the coaching when it comes to the secondary. Now, it's like it's a little bit tricky because with Ravens, they usually do a very, very good job of developing their cornerbacks. Now, one thing that they have to do better this year, in my opinion, is giving help to those cornerbacks and really aiding those cornerbacks, especially if those cornerbacks are struggling, not continuing to let them be in situations where they continue to struggle. But this is not the video for that. Anyway, um, he overall is in a pretty good spot when it comes to learning as a cornerback. We've seen plenty of cornerbacks over the years with the Ravens come and go who have developed very well, very nicely. Uh, and I expect us to continue to see that. Now, uh, as far as what he can do for the Ravens, um, he is in a very a good and a bad spot because the Ravens, oh boy, they have, well, going into the season, they had so much depth in the secondary. It was like, oh my goodness, let's go. Oh, even our backups could be starters. Let's get it. And then injuries, of course, happen. Now, I'm recording this uh, on Friday, November 26th, um, and Jimmy Smith, he has not practiced all week. Anthony Averett, he was out last week in the Bears game um, due to injury. Tavon Young, he, he returned to practice today, so that's good, and I believe he practiced in full. Um, but my point is that, and Marcus Peters, of course, been out the whole season, but my point is that he may unfortunately, well, not unfortunately for him, but unfortunately with the Ravens, he may get playing time a lot sooner rather than later being at the cornerback position because injuries have just taken a toll on these guys big time. And we know, <clears throat> even though they, they've been here for the majority of the year, Jimmy Smith, and of course, Tavon Young. Tavon Young, he's been doing it, and we've been proud of Tay-Tay. Because -Tay, Tay -Tay, we, we know Tay-Tay's history, and it's not good when it comes to injuries. So he's been, we, we love it, I and mean, we're super happy for him. But we know with their history, with Tavon Young's history, with Jimmy Smith's history, and with Anthony Avid. In recent weeks, they've been super banged up. And Ravens have been very short when it comes to the cornerback position. So we all know that this is also a passing league. So those cornerbacks are going to continue to get tested. Those cornerbacks, the, the, the teams are going to continue to try to take advantage of them, especially if Ravens, their secondary is so depleted, which it has been depleted all year. Now, Jeff Zrebeck did say Chris Westry, he practiced for the most part today. But he said he ended up leaving early. So hopefully it ain't nothing serious. Hopefully it's just something super minor. But usually Fridays are the days where when they practice, if you practice on Friday, you're usually good to go for the game on Sunday. So we'll see how things go. But anyway, my point is with all that being said, unfortunately due to injury, but fortunately for Tolliver, he may get playing time sooner uh, rather than later. Because we've seen it so much over the year, even just dating back to last year. We remember. Remember Mar Marcus Peters, there was a period of time where he was dealing with like a hamstring or something like that, a thigh injury. Marlon Humphrey, he had been out with COVID. And, um, and I, think he, I think he had dealt with an injury last year too, I believe. I don't remember for sure though. But anyway, we saw guys like, and then Tavon Young, he had went out. Uh, we saw guys like uh, Khalil Dorsey. Like, who would have thought, all right, we got this guy Khalil Dorsey. He, he ain't going to get no playing time, though. Wrong. Devontae Harris. Terrell Bonds. Like, these were guys who the Ravens signed, and a lot of us were thinking, like, oh, okay, yeah, depth, special teams. Ah, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, cool, whatever. But no, no, no. These guys played on defense. They played on defense. And then the same thing with Anthony Averett last year, too. 
He was supposed to be more of a depth guy. That would that would still get some significant playing time, but still, his plan your playing time goes up when the guys in front of you go down. And again, NFL next man up stands for not for long. We already know that, and Ra Ravens fans especially this year, we definitely know that. Ugh, yikes! I know the the question has been asked so many different times. Like, man, we know about next man up, but how many men we got left? Because it's been injury after injury after injury after injury after injury. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on uh, Kevin Tolliver. So I unfortunately do not, uh, of course, not against him, but more so against the, the Ravens injuries. I unfortunately expect to see him sooner uh, rather than later. But ho hopefully we get to see him, but just maybe on special teams or something, because that would mean that the guys up front, they're not hurt. But, you know, like for him, his family, his, his opportunity. You never know when that opportunity could come about. And, and what, it, what it's about, what opportunity is about, is making the most of whatever chances you're given. So we'll see how it works itself out. And we'll see how he ends up doing. And of course, Team Keep It Clean, if y'all know anything about Kevin Tolliver, of course, like y'all always do, feel free to share it in the comment section. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Thank you for 48,000 subscribers. Thank you. We 2,000 subscribers away from 50K. So, whenever that happens, it happens. No rush. We vibing. Uh, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.